Hello everybody and welcome back to this bullshit. So I'm going to be working on a new series, possibly. Uh, this is the first episode of it. It's basically UE4 topic for slow people. And what it's going to entail is a very simplified look and simplified explanation for different UE4 topics with regards to reversing and UE4 in general. Is it really a tutorial? This is just explained. However, at the end, I will be showing you good methods to find what I am talking about the topic or reverse it or whatever the topic's about. For example, today is static load object for slow people. So I'm going to go over static load object, what it does, why it's needed, why you would want it and what to want to reverse it and how you can find it in a UE4 game. And it's a, actually one of the simpler functions to find. In fact, there's about three or four of them that you can find. Uh, before anybody gets upset that I said slow people, I'll have you know, I am the king of slow people. I have been called that by many people I know. The king of slow people. So don't worry, the king is here. I take the crown. I'll grab that right there. So, static load object. In simple terms, it finds... And loads an object by a string name by a string to the file path, and base so basically, if you want, let's say, a model, if you want to statically load a model, you would put the entire path. For example, if in your content browser you have that model under uh, models slash Christmas slash present, what you would do is you would do, you know, slash game slash uh, model slash Christmas slash present and then the name of whatever your model is and it would load it into memory now the reason you would want to use static load object is because if you're reversing a game and you're generating an SDK there's going to be things that it's not going to be able to get or generate classes for or that you're not going to be able to just uh, static load the class in most SDKs you can just put the name of the class and static load it but the issue comes with, what if that is not loaded into memory? And that's when you need to get into another target, another topic. So before we continue with static load object, we got to talk about garbage collection. So garbage collection, basically, in Unreal Engine, it, and mostly anything, it takes U objects that are no longer referenced or have been, you know, explicitly told to be destroyed after a certain period, and it cleans it up so that it's no longer in memory, because you wouldn't want that stuff taking up memory. Uh, to better explain it, let's bully a friend real quick. So, if you are playing a game like my friend's game right here, and you are on this space map, there would be no reason for you to have a Christmas tree uh, model loaded into memory. That map doesn't use it. Nothing uses it. So, there is no need for there to be a direct reference to that model, which means if you try to do that in an SDK, you're going to get a null because it's not existent. However, if you were to actually go to the map on which that Christmas tree was there, you would be able to find it most of the time unless they explicitly destroy it because it's loaded into memory. The same thing goes for blueprints and pretty much anything else that is in the game. And once you leave that level, of course, garbage collection, that uh, U-object is no longer of any use. So, the reason you would want to use this is in a game, like my friend's game. What if I want to change the gun to be a Christmas tree? If I want to set the static mesh? Well, you can't exactly just get the Christmas tree because it is only on that one map and the memory is gone. It doesn't exist there. So what static load object allows you to do, it allows you to load whatever object you have the path to into memory. So then after that, you can do whatever you want. So if I load it into memory, then I get the weapon, I can set the I can set the static mesh to the object that was grabbed. And as you know, or you should know, static, use static mesh, use skeletal mesh, all of that stuff. Everything is pretty much a derivative of U object. So getting static load U object is the best thing to get, in my opinion. And I know there's some people who like static load object internal and static load U class, but you can do all of that with static load object, so there's not really a point for anything else. But that's pretty much, in simple terms, what it is. I'm going to get on to showing you how to get it now. Uh, it's a very simple and easy way. So the good thing about static load object is it has, in the UE4 source, 
a lot of string references and things that are printed out, which makes it incredibly easy to find. And what I'm going to do, actually, is I'm going to show you how you can find it. And this works for other things, too, but I'm going to show you specifically for static load object at the moment. So I'm reversing a game that I actually made. Um, it's a shooter. If I go into the details, it's on UE 4.24.3. So let's go into GitHub. Let's select that tag so that we, we don't want to be looking at something new because we don't know what they changed. And if I look up in the UE4 docs, static load object. We, it'll tell us exactly where it is in the source. So let's just copy this and let's paste it right onto here. Let's find it so we don't have to search. Static load object. There we go. So let's start here because these are all very close to each other. You can see right here, this is the thing I was talking about earlier, the static load object internal. Well, if you go underneath of it, there's static load object, and then there's static load class. And it's pretty much set up the same way in, when you reverse it in IDA, but it's flipped. So instead of going down from static load object internal, you'd be going upward. And I'll explain that in a minute. So if you look at static load object internal, you'll see a couple things. The thing you want to look for uh, more than anything is basically... The, it's right here, right here, the UE log, because these are strings. This is a string right here. Basically, it's supposed to log this, return an object still needed to load from the internal, you know, static load internal. But the, what you can do with this is since this is inside of the function static load object internal, if we search this string up, assuming that there's not multiple strings to just like this, identical, if there's not identical strings to this, then the only string in there can be to static load object internal because it is literally in this function. And let me show you what I mean. If I copy that, let's go into strings and let's search for the string. There's only one string, which means it has to be inside of here more likely than not. So let's click it. Let's go to the xref. Let's scroll up to the top. And actually, you can even confirm this more sometimes depending on if it has any other strings that you want to look at. This doesn't have any other strings put in here that you need to worry about. So let's just skip that and scroll up. So the structure is pretty much the same. So what we'll do is this. Like I said, if static load object internal is here, then one down here is static load object which means one up from one up from this should be static load object because it is the opposite. So let's scroll down here and let's scroll up. And actually, you could look for this error string and you may be able to find it this way. Or if it has any UE4 logs, you might be able to find it this way right here. So what we'll do is if we think this is static load object, let's scroll up. Oh, you see that right here. Fail to find object, class name, outer, all of that stuff. It looks the exact same here. Object not found is another string here. And if we, which means we can pretty much confirm at this point, we don't even have to scroll up much farther. Object name, this has everything. So let's just scroll up to the start of the function. It's a big function. Calling static. Right here, calling static load object, another string. This is 100% the load object function at this point. Because you can compare all of the strings, and it is exactly the same. Alright, I have the names right here for what we're going to be loading. So, static load object, let's rename the function for it. There you go. Now you can look up, if I was not a complete slow idiot, static load object. And it would appear here. And, of course, if you do the opcodes, you can get the bytes you want and call the function, which is really good. And, since it is an object, and you object, everything is a derivative from, you can cast it to whatever you want. If you have a custom actor, you can. In fact, that's how I do it for the pack loader. Uh, if I need to static load an object from a custom pack, I do it this way. So, 
I'm going to add a little bit of a tip thing here. If static load object is here and we 100% confirmed it like we did, that means the function that was directly below us is odds are 100% static internal. Or what is it called? Static load object internal. Because we not only confirmed the one string, but all the strings in static load object was confirmed. So let's just name this too. So I always like naming as many functions as possible, which means if both of these are true, that means that right above static load object is static load class. And if I scroll down, load mismatch class, this is static load class. So that's simply, you already have found three, three, the three biggest, in my opinion, static load functions, and you can use them as you will. Well, hope you, hopefully you all got a little something out of this. I tried to explain it as simply as possible and as fastly as possible. You know, if you just skip to the end, the summary of it is it loads objects in the memory that are usually not loaded because there's no need for them to be loaded. So, yeah, that's pretty much it. See ya.